Okay, three weeks ago you bought crunchy peanut butter, but now you want the girls to play D and D. Do you have a drug problem? What's the big deal? Raj bailed so we could use some extra players. Well, I've just never played Dungeons and Dragons with girls before. Oh, don't worry, sweetie. No one has. So how are you gonna do this? Yeah. These crazy projects. <sighs> Well, um... This pop culture reference to stereotypical Dungeons & Dragons players is not new. Since its inception, the game of Dungeons & Dragons and its players have been negatively labeled. These stereotypes were what intrigued myself and a group of fellow anthropology students to explore in depth the game of Dungeons & Dragons, also known as D&D. Prepubescent... White teenage virgins. Male... That, um, you know, like, have very poor social skills and, you know, don't know how to interact with the world. Live in the basement, um, never had a girlfriend. Despite the negative stereotypes, today over 20 million people all over the world play D&D. Celebrities like talk show host Stephen Colbert, author Stephen King, actor Vin Diesel, and basketball player Tim Duncan have helped increase its popularity. Joe Manganiello even created a clothing line inspired by his love for the game. How does a game that's known for social outcasts become one of the most popular role-playing games ever created? We decided to ask avid D&D players about its appeal. I love the teamwork aspect of working with other players to fulfill a goal. And I also like the killing part of it. You're envisioning this shared world, you're creating stories together. D&D is being able to get together with your friends this really awesome way to start breaking out of my shell. You get to fight monsters. To become a bit more confident about who I was as a person. Use your imagination. Try out identities, behaviors, etc. in a setting where it's a little bit less personal because you have the proxy of a character. Our interest was thoroughly piqued. We decided, as a group, to play our own game of D&D. The only problem, we had no idea how to play. Uh, so what do I do? First, you have to create a character. Roll your dice and find out what your ability scores are. What are those? Oh, well, that tells you if you're strong or smart or how good you are with a weapon. What are you, some super smart guy? Oh, I don't have a character. I'm the dungeon master. I control the game and act out all the characters you meet along the way. And Daniel, watch out for him. He's sneaky. All right. There goes nothing are kind of like near the end of your journey. Uh, you're getting towards your destination. Six of us anxiously sat down at a large table on a Saturday night to play. Sean, our dungeon master, had created our characters uh, and character sheets. These character sheets allowed us to take on new personas and become mystical creatures such as ogres, magicians, thieves, and even Ursula, our pet bear. Over the next few hours, we set off on a quest to deliver supplies to the small town of Hollow. As we ventured into an unnaturally dark and desolate town, we came upon a gentleman by the name of Brom, explaining to us that the town had been cursed and that on All Hollow's Eve a horseman would harass and kill one of the villagers. We felt compelled to help. Venturing deep into the forest to find him, we came upon the horseman and his four lackeys. After defeating them, we headed back into town only to find that the horseman was still alive and seeking revenge. Brom had failed to explain that he was to blame for the curse befalling the town and that he had used countless delivery caravans, such as ours, as sacrifice to the horsemen. Collectively deciding we couldn't leave the town at the mercy of evil, we decided to kill the horsemen and Brom, setting the town free of the curse, bringing peace to the souls, and blessing the village of Hollow. After enjoying our gameplay, we were interested to learn a bit more about D&D's early history. In the basement of his home in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, high school dropout Gary Gygax and friend Dave Arneson set out to create a game that was continuous and free-forming. In January of 1974, Dungeons and Dragons was born. In the early 1980s, however, controversy quickly arose. It began as a cult phenomenon, then it caught on. Now a new game is sweeping the country. You will burn forever and ever in eternal torment. You are no more. People viewed it as being satanic and demonic. People uh, supposedly getting lost in caves and they went crazy playing the game. Um, corrupting the youth of America. Conservative religious groups, with the aid of television media, started a revolution of moral panic. They claimed that Dungeons and Dragons was an introduction to devil worship and the occult. 
The media first took notice with the disappearance of a 16-year-old college student, James Dallas Egbert. It was reported that Egbert may have disappeared into the steam tunnels underneath Michigan State University while playing D&D. A few days after Egbert's disappearance, he was found safe at the home of a friend. Although Egbert's disappearance was short, religious groups used it as mounting evidence to show how the game of D&D was corrupting the souls of the youth. The hype was ultimately debunked. Interestingly, sales of the game quadrupled in the 90 days after Egbert's disappearance. D&D spent many years in the shadows. From the negative stereotypes to moral panic, it took several decades for the game to become mainstream. Although many of the stereotypes still exist, D&D has become incredibly popular with players young and old. Everyone saw D&D as this really nerdy thing, and in a way, it still is. Coming a badge of honor to be considered a nerd. Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy has kind of like gone through its own little renaissance. Indeed, D&D has gone through a renaissance. Internet access and social media has helped to make D&D one of the most popular role-playing games ever created. Enthusiasts no longer have to hide out in their basements to enjoy the game. In addition to being a fun game to be played with friends, D&D also had a great impact in other areas of life. D&D throughout my life has just been this kind of vehicle to learn so many different things knowledge and strength and it helps build up these life skills and confidence how to work with other people and you're learning to look at situations from more than one angle it's definitely taught me a little bit about being more flexible about thinking that allows for a lot of creativity and empathy what has this quest taught us first that although stereotypes are widely held ideas about a particular person or thing they are oversimplified you cannot judge a book by its cover nor can you judge a player by the game Secondly, throughout the semester we have learned to be more patient, to cooperate, to be flexible, and to be creative. D&D's core aspects have taught all of us that in order to complete a quest, everybody needs a voice, and no voice is more important than another. It is I, Carlos the Dwarf. The dragon has been slain, and you're free to rule your kingdom. Congratulations, Daniel. You just finished your first Dungeons & Dragons campaign. <laughs> Woo!